Hi, my name is Jason Bremner, and I'm the Program Director for Population Health and Environment here at the Population Reference Bureau. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about a policy brief that I've recently written on the challenges that population poses to food security in Sub-Saharan Africa. As you know, the world's population recently surpassed 7 billion. And that news, in combination with last year's record food prices and famine in the Horn of Africa, has once again raised the seemingly age-old question on the connections between population and food. Well, rather than focus on how we'll feed the world's growing population, I, as a demographer, prefer to focus more closely on understanding how many we'll actually need to feed. So let's take a closer look at food security. Food security exists when all people at all times have both physical and economic access to sufficient food to meet their dietary needs for a productive and healthy life. And the world has put eradicating poverty and hunger at the top of its list of Millennium Development Goals, with the target of having, between 1990 and 2015, the proportion of people who suffer from hunger. Now, much of the world has made great progress towards this target, but despite some advances, most of Sub-Saharan Africa is not on track to achieve this food security target. Let's look at how population contributes to this challenge. So what you're looking at is a graph showing the total number of children under five in Sub-Saharan Africa in 1990. And in 1990, there were roughly 90 million children and 27% of them were underweight. Now in 2010, you can see that the number of children has grown by 50% to 138 million. And although the proportion of underweight has declined to 22%, there are actually now 30 million children underweight, and that's 5.5 million more children than 20 years ago. So this graph clearly illustrates that population growth is increasing the amount of food needed in Sub-Saharan Africa. So why is population growing in Sub-Saharan Africa? Well, today, women, on average, have five children. That's down from seven in 1970, but still higher than the global average of 2.5. And it's really higher than most women's desired family size. This high fertility is driving population growth. And since 40% of Sub-Saharan Africa's population is under 15 and yet to enter their reproductive years, future population growth really depends on the reproductive choices of current and the coming generation. So let's look at some population projections more closely uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa and for specific countries. What you're looking at is a graph of population in Sub-Saharan Africa over time. In 1970, there were approximately 300 million people in the region. Over the next 40 years, the population almost tripled to 850 million people in 2010. What happens next depends largely on fertility. The United Nations, in their medium estimate, projects that population will more than double to almost 2 billion in 2050. That number, 2 billion, is what most people concerned about agriculture and food use to estimate future food needs. But to get to 2 billion, the UN assumes that fertility will decline from an average of 5 children per woman today to 3 in 2050. Is this decline in fertility possible? Let's take a look at the Democratic Republic of Congo to examine this question more closely. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, nearly half of all children younger than five are stunted or too short for their age. And poverty and instability in the country make improving nutrition and food security a great challenge. At the same time, the population has grown from 20 million in 1970 to approximately 70 million today. And over that period, the average farm size declined from one and a half hectares to less than half a hectare. Looking forward now, the UN estimates that even with a sharp decline in the average number of children per woman, the country's population will more than double by 2050 
to more than 140 million. How sharp a decline in fertility does the UN assume? Well, they assume that the average number of children per woman will decline from more than six today to 2.7 in 2050. And while such a decline is not unprecedented, it does mean that the use of modern contraceptives would need to grow from 6% of married women today to approximately 70% by 2050. This won't occur without a strong commitment to improving the lives of women and girls. In countries where governments are making this commitment, progress has been impressive. For example, in Ethiopia and Rwanda, economic development and girls' education are fostering opportunities for women, and strong commitments to family planning programs have helped couples achieve their desired family size and timing of pregnancies. Still, almost two out of three women in sub-Saharan Africa who want to avoid or delay a pregnancy aren't using a modern method of contraception. Current investments in family planning programs do not meet today's needs. So now you've seen that future food needs depend on our investments in women and girls and particularly their reproductive health. I encourage you to explore this policy brief and other content on our website for a deeper discussion of the connections between population, women, and agriculture. Thanks. Thank you.